Hello, and welcome to Paranormal in Pennsylvania, where we discuss history and hauntings. Today, we're going to be traveling to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, to the Betsy Ross House. I'm Erica. And I'm Sarah. Let's get into it. So, uh, Betsy Ross, pretty famous. (laughs) We know her as the person who made the first modern American flag. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, And so the house that she lived in approximately from 1776 through 1779 is a couple blocks away from the Liberty Bell and Independence Hall. So it's pretty central. Yeah, there's like, isn't there like a tour of Philadelphia? Can't you look down into Ben Franklin's house too or something? I think so, yes. It seems like these historical buildings are pretty close to each other, which is interesting. Um, So yeah, it's like right in the center of everything. And... um, Betsy Ross kind of got involved with making this flag when George Washington and two members of the Congressional Committee visited her in 1776, and she convinced Washington to change the shape of the stars um, in a sketch of the flag that he had showed her from six-pointed to five-pointed by demonstrating that it was easier to cut the shape of the five-pointed star. wonder why they were six-pointed to begin with. That does seem... Like, that seems like it would take more fabric, more time, and for things to be hand-sewn back then. Yes, exactly. And the the interesting thing was, too, I read that she apparently was able to take a piece of paper and fold it, and then cut one part of it, and it would turn into a five-pointed star. Oh, wow. So, for her, this was, like, much easier. And so, in the 1870s, the Mund family moved in and took advantage of the home's history by posting a sign outside that read, First flag of the U.S. made in this house. I mean, makes sense. Capitalize on it. Right. And then by the later 1800s, most of the other colonial area era buildings on the block of this street were torn down and replaced with larger and more modern buildings. And so in order to preserve this one... They actually established it as, you know, the American Flag House and the Betsy Ross Memorial Association raised money in order to purchase the home and save it from Mm. being modernized. Well, that's good. Yeah. Because I do feel like this is such an important part of history. Like, you know, people have heard of the presidents and stuff, but everybody also knows who Betsy Ross is. Yes. Like, even if you don't know what she's known for... You still know her. Right. Her name. Yeah. So Betsy's grave is actually at the Betsy's the Betsy Ross house. And just like Jenny, she was moved three times. And I I cannot express how I feel like that lends itself to them being kind of stuck. Stuck, yeah. Because they get moved so much, their spirits disturbed. You know what I mean? Yeah. So the interesting thing about the home is there have been notable deaths of people, which also lends itself to the ghosts. So we'll kind of get into that. You know that painting that's called The Birth of Our Nation? And it's basically showcasing Betsy Ross making the flag. Yeah, she's like in the on the one side and the flag is sprawled out. Yes. Yeah. So that was painted by Charles Henry Weisberger. And he actually passed away in this home. That's weird. Right. Very coincidental. And then in 1980, two security guards for the home got into an altercation in the basement of the gift shop. And the fight apparently turned really sour when one of the guards pulled out his gun and shot the other one. My gosh, what were they fighting over? It didn't say. It just, they just... We're somehow fighting about something, and the guard that shot the other one left him there overnight. Oh my gosh. So, it's kind of been a crazy history. Like, mm-hmm. not even just speaking about Betsy Ross, but just the other things that have happened in this house right. are kind of crazy. So, in general, visitors have claimed to hear disembodied voices coming from the area where the murder took place in the gift shop basement, which makes sense. Yeah. Then, in the parlor of the home where Betsy is said to have met with the U.S. Flag Committee, witnesses have stated that they feel a very dark and foreboding presence in the room with them. And other visitors and staff members have heard rustling and voices coming from the basement of the house itself. I wonder why the dark forces in the flag room. 
I know. I was trying to figure out if anything else had happened in there, but it doesn't look like it. I just... I wonder if that's just, like, a significant part of the house, and so that's where they rest. Yeah, maybe. Because it seems like that, that's such a important, positive moment in America's history. Yes. Yes, definitely. So, there was another death... Again, in this house. So in the director's office, the house's former owner passed away in that room. And one other former director apparently was in the attic of the home, which is where the director's office is. And they felt a large hand grab on to their shoulder roughly, which is terrifying. Yeah. And she was so frightened by the experience that she actually climbed out of the window and onto the flagpole outside because she was too afraid to cross into the room. Oh my gosh. She escaped down the steps. That is dangerous. Yes. And also like that hand had to feel super intense for somebody to be so scared that they climbed out of the window. Yeah. It must have felt so real to her. Yes. Interesting enough, um, Betsy Ross herself has also been witnessed. So from what I understood from the research, I don't think that anything like crazy happened to her here. But she apparently lost her husband to an explosion when he served the country. She also lost one of her daughters while she was married to her third husband. Third husband. Yes, she was married three times. (laughs) So rumor has it that the woman sobbing by the bed in the bedroom is Betsy, and she's mourning the loss of her husband and child. Aw, Which is very sad, yes. But very plausible. Yeah. This house was featured on a Ghost Hunter episode, which was interesting. So um, once they arrived at the landmark, that's when the director explained um, the two security guards Mm -hmm. fighting. The Ghost Hunters team captured disembodied voices around the house, just like other witnesses have said. And then a staff member at that point had heard rustling and voices coming from the basement. So interesting. Yes. I mean, the basement makes sense. Were people always buried at home in this time period? Because like like you said, Jenny was. Yeah. And I honestly, I don't know if that was like a common occurrence. But then we also have talked about the Quaker Cemetery that dates back really far too so i don't know just something interesting to consider yeah i wonder if it was i mean i think i think most people were religious but maybe it's a religious thing Mm. to be buried in a cemetery and maybe some people weren't but i don't know a ton of people were religious yeah and it seems to lend itself to your house becoming haunted that's why i asked (laughs) yes so when the ghost hunters team was in the basement which is where they kind of like heard those voices they actually heard someone walking above them oh my gosh yeah and so when one of them then went to go look to see what was causing the noise like they went into the room on top of the basement Uh, apparently the room was just empty of course it was yes yeah in the director's office where that former director had basically um felt that hand presence Mm -hmm. and like got the heck out of there Um, They were able to use their digital recorder to capture what sounds like a man's voice coming from next to them in the room. Oh my gosh, that is freaky. Yes, Um, but they couldn't make out what the person said. For whatever reason, it was just muffled. Yeah, I know. It would have been interesting to to know. So they also um, used something called a K2 meter in the basement. And it's known as a fear cage, which is kind of the thing that I was talking about. Like it, um, like connects to the electromagnetic field. Oh yeah. Yes. And they did hear a loud moaning sound come from that. Interesting. But they did not see a culprit for the noise. So it's kind of like the thing that we were talking about before where it's like none of the people in the house could have made that noise. Right. And yet it still happened. Yeah. So upon completing the investigation, they found that the the house does have paranormal presences, but according to them, um, they aren't like malevolent. It's just kind of spirits roaming. Yeah. Well, it sounds like, you know, with so many deaths and the bodies residing there for an extended period of time, like it makes sense. And not that they're there because 
anything like crazy happened to them. I mean, they did die there, but it's just stuck, it sounds. Yes, it's just like a piece of history has been left behind. Yes, exactly. Um, even with even with the murder near the gift shop, it doesn't seem like those spirits near there are like mean. Right. <laughs> mean is not mean is an understatement, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yes. Like they're not um out to get anybody, I guess, yes. is a better way to put it. I can't think of the word that I'm thinking of right now, but yeah. So I I think it's interesting. I definitely me personally, I would definitely visit. I think I've never been. I don't know if you've been. I have been. I, I was really young though. I think it was in third grade, right when I moved to Pennsylvania. I think right. we went on like a school field trip there. So I should go back. And yes. I mean, historical Philadelphia is really cool anyways. I mean, the Liber- to me, the Liberty Bell feels overdone. But I just say that as someone who, whenever people visit, they always want to see the Liberty Bell and Independence Hall. Yes. But you have these hidden gems like Betsy Ross's house and the Ben Franklin house and stuff that you can go see, which are still very historically significant and very interesting and apparently haunted. Yeah, which I feel like it's... It's common sense now that I'm older and thinking about it, but, like, when I was visiting these places as a kid, I did not think that there were ghosts. Like, no. did not cross my mind that these places could be haunted. So, yeah, I and I think I would definitely go, again, because I haven't been. It would be interesting, and I think I would go at night. I think it would mm-hmm. be creepy, but I think I would go. Yeah, I would, too. I think it could also be cool to go at night and just see it, because it's pretty well preserved, right? Yes, yeah. That would be cool. To yeah, see because it both they that day and night. they stopped it from being modernized, right? Which is great. So yes, that is the story of the Betsy Ross house and the ghosts um, that come with it. Tune in next week to see where we go next. <laughs>